welcome to the Chasing Meeples podcast. If you want a lighthearted take on board games with a sprinkling of hilarity, you're in the right place. On today's episode, Chris and Angie finally review a game that is sure to fly off the shelves. It's a game that two can play if you really wanna do it. Wingspan Asia. They also discuss games they played while on vacation. It's out or nothing. This episode is going to be a hoot. Okay, that's enough wise quacks. The banter starts now. Hello everybody, this is Chasing Meeples. I am your host, Chris, and I am with my lovely co-host. Hello, hello, it's Angie. And this is episode nine of the Chasing Meeples podcast, where we are going to talk about like like the like the announcer guy said, we're going to do our full review of Wingspan Asia, a game that we've been a review we've been promising for geez a couple of weeks now, and now is the time. We're also going to spend some time talking about the vacation that we took. We alluded to that in our last episode, and now we're going to talk about the games that we played at that vacation. But before then, now it's time for a little bit of banter. So, Angie? Chris? You are the banter expert. Well, first I want to... My throat is still a little bit on the uh, sore side. Not so much sore, but I might be sounding a little bit better. Because like last time, we discussed how... Chris sounds really good, <laughs> and I sound, hey, still, you too. Still I'm hanging just, on to that I'm grudge, huh? This. Still hanging, It'll hanging be on to that grudge. <laughs> Whatever. 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 So, Why did you give me that whatever face? You did that. You gave me that whatever face. Yesterday. I gave you that when we were recording our video for Ollie's channel. That's right. Whatever face. Yeah. I'll give you that whatever <laughs> face, because sometimes you say things that make that whatever face useful, I guess. I don't know how to put it. I say something that I think is funny and you're like, whatever. 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 <laughs> well, if you watch those videos back, there's a lot of whatever faces that I give you. Oh, really? So there's other <laughs> whatever faces I miss? <laughs> Micro whatever faces. You know, I'm so busy looking at my wrinkles on my yeah. face. I don't see the whatever faces. Well, I take advantage of the fact that I know you're fixating on every line and every wrinkle. Although, you know, every, to tell you, exactly, and that she shows the fact that you did the one with Mayor McFuzzy <laughs> face and I never knew it. Yeah. Oh, so that's the thing. What Angie is talking about. We recorded a video for Favorite Game Friday, and that was uh, Abstract Games. And my Abstract Game that I was talking about is Tiny Towns. So the video starts off with me saying, my Abstract Game is Tiny Towns. And Angie says, well, why do you like Tiny Towns? So then I start explaining it. Well, as Mayor McFuzzy Face, I get to build my town by building by placing resources on a four by four grid. And as I'm speaking, my, I, I take an overlay of a rabbit literally over me. And we watched the video twice. <laughs> I kid you not. After it was done, before we were, we, before we uploaded it to the dice tower, we watched it twice and I'm just sitting here waiting, just waiting patiently for Angie to say, huh, where did you get that rabbit picture? Or that's really clever. That's really good. But no, you never said it. So finally I said, did you see that I turned? Did did you see Mayor McFuzzy face? And you didn't. So you, I said, oh, let me see it again. <laughs> and that's what I'm looking at. Going, oh my gosh, there's a rabbit there. How did you do that? Because she's doing nothing but looking at all of the imperfections that she sees in herself. And the whole time, I know she's thinking about 
Chris needs to put a filter on here. Oh Talk my god! About I not be me. I'm the lighting's so, horrible. So unobservant. The fact that I'm literally sitting next to a rabbit in this video and I never <laughs> noticed it. I'm just here complaining about you don't know how to use a filter on your phone. What is this? I need different cover up. I need to. <laughs> We're going to Alta. We're going to Alta. We're going to Alta. <laughs> and, then you're, and, then you're, and then you said, hey, did you look? Did you see what I did here? <laughs> no. Nope. Oh, my gosh. Where did this rabbit come from? Hmm. Yeah, that was a very good video. I mean, I look blind and I have to stop looking at you like that because I look at you and I look at you. I look down and for some reason it makes me look like I'm blind. But see, once again, that's me just picking apart myself. Yeah, you see things that nobody else in this world sees. So you well, should stop saying that. Otherwise, people are going to start The next thinking. thing you release is going to be, people are going to see it. Because if people are looking at this on a 50-inch screen, my face is going to be 25 <laughs> inches high. So, yeah, everybody will see it. Well, whatever. So... And I think you look good, but it doesn't matter what I think. As long as you are, if you're not happy with yourself, I can't change it. But I think the next time we record something, you can be the cinematographer and then there will be nobody to blame, but there is, yourself. there was no cinematography needed our phone was stationed where it had always been and for some reason the editing came out and my head is two feet high that's because i zoomed in on your face duh why cinematography i think there's another underlined reason why for some reason this future video that no one has any idea what we are speaking about <laughs> actually it will probably have been released by the time people are listening to this oh okay but that's okay this is this is good this is good this is good this is good that's how let's get it all works. out let's therapy let's get yeah, this get all this out. Therapy out, get out get it out just like also when at the end of that said video, I say, if you enjoy listening to Awkward Moments, please consider listening to our podcast. <laughs> Here's that awkward there, moment, here it ladies is. and gentlemen. Here it is. Therapy. So, yeah. Yeah. So, well, I don't even know what we were talking about. I have no idea. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I think that's enough banter then for <laughs> for this episode. Let's. Move on. Quiz time. All right, it's quiz time. I love quizzes, Angie. I am so ready for this one. Okay, this quiz is going to give you a possibility of nine or ten. Nine or ten. Nine or ten. So nine regular points, one bonus point. Is that what you're saying? Yes. All right. Yes. Well, you know me. I'm Mr. Max Points. So are. shooting for you ten. Are. So as I said last time, I normally try to do something that starts with our name, Chasing Meeples, and then bring it to a board game. This one's going to kind of mash that two together, but here we go. We know that the word meeple was originally coined from the game Carcassonne. What are the colors in the original base game of Carcassonne? The meeples. What color are the meeples? Mm -hmm. Green, blue, yellow, and red. There's one more. Brown-ish, like wood color. Wrong. Oh. So you got four for that one. I'm just keeping track here. Okay, what is the one I missed? Black. There's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the one I always pick. It is. Well, sort of. Sort of. Number two. What country is Carcassonne in? France. Very good. That was our geography portion of this quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Mists over Carcassonne is released in 2022. That is the newest Carcassonne game. 
miss over Carcassonne. Yes. What is a new mechanic in this game? I don't necessarily think of it as a mechanic, but BGG called it a mechanic. Well, you're. It's I like so. it's like the mist, and God, if I remember correctly, there's a big thing. Yeah, you're ghost hunting or something like That's that, a, right? It's a bigger thing than that. Like the light cooperative. It's cooperative. It's cooperative. Yeah. There you go. Co- That's what I was looking for. It is a co-op game. It is a co-op game. Number four. Myths over Carcassonne. The players are playing together. They are working together to stop the spread of A, locusts, B, ghosts, or C, crabgrass. <laughs> ghosts. Okay. Ghosts. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to just, I thought, I thought multiple choice. Oh yeah. Crabgrass. Cause I mean, I would have, that would have, that would have thrown me. I'm thinking, what are you stopping to spread? I don't know. It came to my mind. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. There are two new meeples in the game. Can you name one type? What is one of the two new meeples in the game? Ghost. And like lantern meeples, like a mist or a fire. There's a pink meeple. Oh, well. One, two, three, four, eight. Eight out of nine? Eight out of nine. Nine, yes. What was the bonus question? The other type of meeple. There were two new meeples. What was the other type? Yeah. Ghost and pink? Yep. Like pink as a player color? Yeah. Well, that's not a new meeple. Well, BGG said it was. That's not a new meeple. Well, the meeples are kind of weird because like the arms are stretched out or something. They're not traditional looking meeples. I looked at the picture and it's like their arm is stretched out. I think they're holding a lantern. Yeah. So, um, but there was a new color. It was pink. That's not. I'll give that to you, but that's not a new meeple. That's a new player type. It's your player color. All right, eight out of nine. Eight out of nine. I'll take it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. I'll take it, take it. I'm going to take it. Well, Chris, let's talk about what we just did. We had a mini vacation. We did. We did. I have a, a business trip I need to take about four times a year. And it had dawned on me since I am homeschooling my son, and that changes things a little bit because Chris needs to take off of work the entire day for that while I am gone. So I thought, hey, maybe since I, yes, I am getting this hotel room paid for, maybe Chris and Gabe could come along and I got the room paid for and, you know, there's a swimming pool and the hotel I have. And then we kind of evolve from there because I stay at a nice hotel. It's not a luxury hotel, but it's a nice hotel. The hotel across the street from where we stay is a resort. And it is the place that when Chris and I and Gabe go on vacation, this is the place we go. Mm -hmm. And your thought was that it was going to be kind of torture on Gabe to be a hotel across the street. Yeah. So we originally, well, first let's, let's talk about your business trips, right? So Angie is a clothes buyer for, is it, would you call yourself the clothes buyer? I'm a women's clothing buyer. Yeah, women clothing buyer. I don't want to be like throwing out a title that you're not. Women's clothing buyer for a department store family owned department store, which I think we've touched on in another in a previous episode. And when we first started seeing each other, I could not get my head wrapped around the fact that in so now now I got this down pat. It is winter and she is buying clothing 
for fall next year of next year. So that was hard for me to understand. Trust me, it still gets to me. <laughs> it still gets to me where I look at people and go, okay, what season is this? So now I now I get it. Now I know when she's going in summer, she's buying stuff for winter of next year. No, spring of next year. So I just screwed that up. All right. So she's usually two seasons ahead of where she is, where we are in real world time. So anyway. So she did that and her usual place that she goes is in Baraboo, Wisconsin. And there's a convention center there uh, at the Ho-Chunk Casino. So she was going to stay at a hotel in the Wisconsin Dells. If anybody is familiar with that place, if you're not, you should check it out. Um, and the normal hotel that she stays at is across the street from the wilderness resorts. So we thought she, the original idea was, is we would just stay in the same room as Angie, get a day pass for Gabe and go, Gabe and I could go to the wilderness while Angie's working. And then we go back to the room. Well, we figured we just canceled the reservations, made some new reservations at the wilderness and made it a little bit of a mini vacation. Because we went an extra day then yep. because it was a it was a strange time. I work um my work market was actually a Sunday and a Monday and I decided I was not gonna go on the Sunday because it's a Sunday. I wasn't right. gonna go to work on a Sunday that I didn't have to. So I was just going in on Monday. So since it was the weekend, we had off and everything, we went in Sunday night, stayed at the wilderness. Um, Monday the next day I went to work and then we stayed over that Monday and left on that Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And usually we save up money and we make it a big, a week long trip, mm -hmm. you know, to the Dells. Um, but this time it was just two days and normally we bring a bunch of games with us and we, <laughs> we figured we'd bring less games, but I still think we brought a lot of games. Yeah. Well, we usually have. More room. Yeah, yeah. We didn't splurge for the room that we would normally yeah, take the, the when expensive we go there room, because yeah. it was just for, you know, two nights. Yeah, normally the room that we normally have has a kitchen table in it, full-size yeah, table. Yeah. This one, we literally just had one of those hotel desks, pulled it in front of, or pulled it in between the two beds in the room and played there. Um, and the lighting in that room was horrible. Oh, but horrible. Anyway, um, so we... What did we bring? We well, we brought beer and bread. Mm -hmm. We brought Nicodemus. Yep. We bought um. We brought a dice throne duo. Mm hmm. We brought. What else did we bring? Super mega lucky box. Super mega lucky box. I think that's and parks. it. Parks or trails. Oh, trails. And trails. Trails. Duh. And. When we were there, we went to this um, game store that Angie usually stops when she goes on this trip by herself. And now, now seriously, I'm telling you now, I'm not just telling the listeners, next time we go to the Dells, we're going to probably have to stop at that and make that a, a, a reason to go so to Baraboo. you Bear like Bear. store? Oh, yeah, I do. It's called Labyrinth, Labyrinth Games. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with it. I was expecting expecting it to be, you know, just like a, a an older, you know, one of the game it, stores, the older stuff on the shelves. It was the first time I went in there, it was. And then by the second time I went in there, it upped their games. It was the first time I went in there, it was all older games and it was it seemed less board game mm -hmm. related. That was and I, a lot of game stores are. It's magic cards, Pokemon cards, D and D stuff. But it wasn't. So it wasn't much of a focus on games. The second time I went in there, I realized they really changed things. They really started putting in new games, and they added another game shelf area and stuff like that. So um, it really upped its board game. Like yeah. The first place I bought Wingspan. I was, and you also bought. Um... Search for Planet X there. 
I did. And I bought Explorers, Explorers there yep. and I bought the expansion for Bloody End there. Yep. So I always This is weird. This is the first time I did buy a game there. Yeah. I um Yeah, I secretly hope that you always come home with another game when you go by yourself. But anyway. So I was very impressed when we walked into that game store. I mean, when you walked in and I was slapped in the face by like Kickstarters that holy cow, you know, they had the the Skyrim. That was a game found game, but they, it was ISS Vanguard. ISS Vanguard. You know, um, they had all these games there that like I have not seen on the shelves anywhere around here that I wasn't expecting. Splinter was there. Yeah. And if I had the money to just throw away, we would have been walking out with ISS Vanguard and Skyrim and some of those other games. Um, but I did come out with a game. I was I was going to buy Starship Captains. I should just buy that game already. Now that's twice that I've had that game in my hands and almost checked out and put it away. I should just buy that game. But we did walk out with a game. I've had my eye on um it's a greater than games release. I believe before that it was released by a game called or a company called Dice Hate Me. Um and anyway it is uh, Micro Brew, the card, the travel card game. Micro Brewers, the the travel card game, also known as Brew Crafters, the travel card game. Talk about confusing. I guess they re-released it as Micro Brewers, and added a couple different things. <clears throat> and there's also a game that I've had my eye on, Home Brewers from greater than games but anyway i saw that on the shelf it was only like 12 bucks mm -hmm. and it was a, it's a nice quick little card game that we played after we played beer and bread yep and yeah so let's talk about let's well let, here's the segue let's talk about beer and bread here it is uh beer and bread has try use cards that is my, um, and you know what I actually thought about? I was thinking about this ahead of time. Nicodemus has try use cards too. It does. Very similar, very similar try use cards. But so when we talked about that on that anticipated games list, yeah, you were talking about the try use cards, yeah. And in my mind, I'm thinking, God, I don't know of any games that we've played that has that. But yes, Nicodemus has that. And it didn't even occur to me until right this minute you said it. Yeah. But also that new microbrewers games has try use cards. You can use it as a recipe. You can use it to brew. You can use it as a. Use the ingredient. Yep. You can use the ingredient and you can, or you can use the equipment mm -hmm. or hire an employee. So not really try use, dual use, I guess we'll call it. Yeah. But yeah. So anyway, this whole time I'm thinking, that well, that's a really unique mechanism, but I guess it's not. <laughs> um, well, with uh, beer and bread, it's really interesting because um, you play over. Six um, years. Six years. And so you play in um, harvest years and then lean years. And when you play in the harvest years, you get cards and then it's a like a drafting mechanism. We pass the cards back and forth and then play them. When you play in the subsequent round, which is the lean years, you have your set of cards, but you keep them to yourself. And you are going to be like the cards. You can gather a resource from it. You can use it for the recipe of either the beer or a bread. Or you can use it's got a nice special power. And some of them, you know, expand your, um, like how much, how many resources you can hold or how much water you can hold and, or expand your bakery. So different, different power. Some of them are end game goals and stuff like that. Um, but it's a really fun game. It's a really fun game. Oh, I like that game a lot. Like I said, it is a game that, I think we were talking in the other episode. Um, to me, it's like a mini version of like an, of an Agricola type of game where you have that farming 
where you could gathering the vegetables, the wheat, um, like a like a mini Uwe Rosenberg type of mm-hmm. game. And so you have that with a two-player version. So it is much easier to get to the table. So it gives you that feel with a very different feel when you get the you got the one card drafting and then the next round that you have everything is leaner and tighter with resources and you keep that hand. So it goes back and forth. And I like that. I think it's really interesting because it does make a small game a little bit more challenging. Yeah, there is definitely a lot of strategy that goes into it. You know, I want to say... We haven't scored a lot of points off this game. We have to get better. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's not a high-scoring game. We'll have to find out. But because you really only get... you. Your final score is the lowest. Yeah, so that I think two. is interesting too, because you you make beer recipes and you make bread recipes, and when the game is all over with, you add up your beer, you add up your bread, and whichever one you have the lowest of is what you score. Mm-hmm. And so that's interesting. So you have to find a balance when you're making your recipes. You have to have a good balance of beer and bread. So you know if you only make a loaf of bread or two loaves of bread, you know, you're, you gotta have that balance. Right. Yeah. And it, for a small game there, it, there's a lot in it. Challenge to it. Sometimes the small games are, don't seem like there's a challenge to them. And there is, Mm -hmm. this is a good thinky game. I'm still trying to figure out what the best strategy is. So when you talk about thinkiness, right, Mm -hmm. it's not as simple as, Collecting resources and brewing beer or yeah, making a recipe, right? You have to balance. Okay, this is a this is a fruitful year. Mm-hmm. So the resources will be available. Mm-hmm. You have to have that balance of now the next season is going to be a dry season or a lean season. So the resources won't be as available. So you have to find that balance of, do I use my card to upgrade my farm by giving me more storage space and maybe take more resources during this phase? Mm-hmm. But you got to be careful because when I've played it before, I had resources in my house or in my storage area. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have any cards that I could use to make a recipe. I didn't have any resources that could make the recipes at my cards. Well, that's what happened to me that first or that one game I played. I could never get rye. I never had cards that would give me rye. And then so the second game we played or a subsequent game we played, I just grabbed rye. Like crazy, I've got rye. I've got I've got pack full of seven rye tokens in there, and I've got nothing to make with it. And I yeah. must have went three rounds without not making anything, looking for cards. I finally I found one card that let me make something that had because I couldn't free up my storage bin. Right. There was no way to free up my storage bin. My storage bin, they were full. I had like one hops you know, a wheat here. And then I had like seven, seven rye. So I couldn't take any more in. Mm-hmm. So I had nothing to do but play all my cards for the powers because I couldn't take anything and I couldn't make anything. And the other thing that I think is speaking of. So then I ruled then there's a balance there with what you're taking, what right. you're harvesting. And that, and that, that was going to go into the next point I was going to make. The unique thing about this game that I, I don't think we've ever played a game like this before is if you play a card that gives you water, rye, and wheat, and you only have room in your storage space for, let's say, the wheat and, mm-hmm. and one of the other ones, your opponent gets the other resource. Yeah. So you're giving your opponent that resource. Now, a lot of times you just don't take it. They have the ability. Game, you're a friendly village as you're trading back and forth. Right. So you're giving it, yeah. Yep. So... It's, um, I like that game. It is, uh, it is definitely one of the top games so far of 2023 in my book. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. That we've played at least. 
So cool. cool. So the other game that we'll, we'll we'll go right in. We'll stick with the beer theme. How's that? Let's talk about microbrewers. So microbrewers is a real small card game. Basically, you are running a microbrewery, and you have a. It's basically a, what you call it a card drafting game. Yeah. Right. Um, and you have a card. Each card has either an employee on it, equipment, or an ingredient. And then everybody has a little recipe card that tells you what you have to have for ingredients to brew beers. Mm -hmm. And there's a points tracker, basically. And there's a market that you choose card that you can choose cards from. Yep. That's where you get your cards from. Yep. And it's a quick game. And it's a little, I don't want to say it's like super thinky, but there is some strategy involved. It was a quick, good filler game. I think it's a good filler game. I think, um, I guess what I saw early on though, and I, sometimes I don't pay attention to these things. A lot of times I don't, but I knew how many of the, like the cherries were on the deck. There was only like four in this whole deck. Right. And there was like two sitting out there in that market. So if I didn't grab those, they may not come around for a while. Oh, for the fruit. For the fruit, for yeah. the fruity beers. And there's, but there's two beers, like the special beer is the yeah. one that takes that. So I grabbed those right away. So I knew my first, first thing that I wanted to brew were those special was the special beer. Yeah. So I that I looked at. Sometimes I don't bother to look and see what resources are in abundance and which ones aren't. So proud of myself. I'm proud of you too. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good game. Um, don't want to talk too much about that. We also brought, well, why did we bring parks, Angie? We brought trails. Trails. Because trails. We should have, I keep saying parks because we should have brought parks well it's a smaller version of park so it's in the same thematic you know universe yeah. whatever. but the wilderness is the wilderness that's the name of the resort so it's all themed that way dark wood but on the walls they have um large there are metal pictures of the national parks just like in the game parks so i thought that was kind of neat and i kind of forgot that trails didn't have those same pictures i kind of you know was going to do this thing where i take a picture next to that picture and be all cool and, <laughs> and even if i wanted to take my picture next to one of those the hallways were so busy and there was always people in the hallways every time we were there so i didn't get a chance to really i wasn't going to stop and do some like instagram thing and make everybody say hey that weird woman um but yeah that was trails we brought trails and then we brought, we played Nicodemus. I like that game. I So Nicodemus is, we'll call it a two-player version of, uh, well, it is a two-player game. So it's like the two-player version of Imaginarium. Imaginarium is a Bruno Cathalia game. And so is Nicodemus. Yeah. And Angie loves Bruno. She just loves all of his games. Sometimes he's a little hit or miss for me, but I'm going to say out of the two Bruno games that I have played. You've played a lot more than Bruno. Okay. Two games. Out of, sorry, I said that wrong. Out of the Bruno games that I have played, Nick, what's my favorite? What's my favorite? Five Bruno? tribes. Five tribes. That's right. This is right up there with five tribes. Okay. That's how much I enjoy this one. Okay. Good. Good. Um, the only thing that I could, so it's almost, a, it's the same theme, right? So you are, you are now, you are the retiring. You're the apprentice and you're trying to take over the retiring yes. guy's job. Yes. Nicodemus is retiring and you're essentially having a competition for who's going to take over um, his job fixing, right. creating these machines. The imaginary machines Machine. or yeah, something. They're all like very strange artwork. Some people absolutely hate it. I don't really look that too closely at the art. It's bizarre looking. Actually, the artwork in Imaginarium is Better. worse than the is worse than the Nicodemus art is bad because there aren't as many yeah. pictures that are in Imaginarium. There's worse. I think I'm but on a so worse as in like weird looking. Yeah. Is what you mean, like yeah. gr grossing you out, weird, yeah. right? Kind of. Oh, imaginarium was worse. But 
I see. And here's my thing. I think the artwork, I like the artwork in both those games. Yeah. I think the artwork in Imaginarium is better compared comparatively to if you take them both. I almost feel like in Nicodemus, the artwork was either stuff that didn't make it into Imaginarium or they tried too hard to recreate the art style. I thought maybe they tried toning it, it down or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I think the art, I think the art style in, in Imaginarium is awesome. It gives me that like. Well, there's more of them, so it's like they choose only so many of them. I think Imaginarium they were better, but I mean that was that's not the game. That's just the artwork of it. But um, it's it's a good game. It, once again, try use cards. You can use them for a production where you are going to get either crystals. Um, is it wood? What's the orange thing? It's that amber, is it? Copper. Copper. It's then, wood, copper, crystal, and charcoalium. Charcoalium. And what are we? What do we call the charcoalium? Charcoalium. Yeah, but we call it like something else. Crust. Was I calling it crustoleum or something, something like, like that? Either? Yeah. <laughs> so each card is going to give you a production. So you're going to gain one of those, or you can make the card, make the machine. And on the side of the card, it has um, what it takes, like a charcoalium, two wood, takes it what it, you know, it's what it costs to make the card, make the machine. Or there are special, I'm going to say the special powers. And some of the special powers on a card could be to discard a previous card on the bric-a-brac, which is like a conveyor belt, and take two of the resources from that card. There's different things like that. And the ones that Chris had did to me was, was it the steal the resources for me? Steal a resource for me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you make a card, and here's the thing, the game plays is that everything lays out on this conveyor belt or this bric-a-brac, and you can make the first card on the conveyor belt. And if you don't want to make the card and make a previous card, you put a charcoalium on there. Mm -hmm. Just like you would in... Um, a good one is... Um, it's like in... The the one with the gnomes yeah. or the, the golems. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Spice, century. Century Spice Road. Spence, well, we play the golem edition, but yeah. Century Spice Road, how you have to put a resource on the cards to take the, the previous cards. We rarely ever built anything from the bric-a-brac. We were building the machines from our hands, and that dawned on me today, right. too. So that was kind of silly, but we always tended to build the machines from our hands. And you build the machines, and you put it into your imaginary workshop right in front of you, and that can hold four machines. When you get to the fourth machine, you have to take your three previous and set them to the side, and then you start again. The thing about these machines is you use it as an engine builder. So if you have a machine that produces wood, you can now use that when you are building the subsequent machines. So like you only need the actual wood resource and then you take, as in Splendor does that, how you have the cards that have the resource on them. You can use that to help pay the cost of a new card, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when you, and that helps, it really helps. And the first game we played, I did not do that at all. But once you get to that fourth card, you have to wipe those. So you no longer have that benefit of those. So now you're kind of starting that engine over again, which is interesting. Because you may have built up a little mini engine here and then suddenly it goes away. But this game plays to 20. Whoever gets to 21st is a winner. That reminds me of... Then a lot of games do that where you just race to the finish. Just stop. Like Splendor kind of does that, whoever gets to 21st. Um, Viticulture does that. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets to that, was it 25 on yeah. Viticulture? Um, and that might be a stone mare thing because they have Scythe kind of does that way yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not used to that and I don't know if I like that. I'm not sure if I like that. I'm either. not sure if I like that. Because it's essentially a race game then. It's yeah. a race. You're, yeah. It's a racing game. And it's interesting for engine building how you're 
you know, you're pumping it, you're getting it going. And suddenly it's kind of like at the same time, yeah, you are racing to the end. So as you're trying to build this engine and see it work, you're racing to the end of this, right? the track. So some of those seem to be, not that they don't work together, but kind of compete with each other. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's a good game. And now it's time for our feature review. Wingspan Asia. Angie and I have been teasing you meeple cheesers. Cheesers. You meeple cheesers. You meeple chasers. For weeks now. Weeks. And you've all, I'm sure, been on the edge of your seat wondering, what do the hosts of our favorite board game podcast Think about the latest and greatest addition to the Wingspan family. Well, your wait is over. This is it. This is it. If you want, I would suggest you pause this podcast. Go get yourself something to drink. Grab some popcorn. Do whatever you got to do. Ooh, popcorn. And get comfy. Because this is it. Angie, kick us off. Wingspan Asia is the most recent expansion for the Wingspan dynasty. I'm going to say it like that. Ooh. They've had, um, up until now, let's see, there was Oceana. There was, is there Europe? Expansion, is that the same as Oceana? The expansions have included extra cards from different places in the world. Different birds. Different birds from different places in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a little bit different. It is a standalone game. So you are going to get the birds from Asia. You are getting a player boards for a sixth and seventh player. You are gaining the opportunity to play as teams. There's a special little dial that works for teams. We don't touch that because we would never play at that high a player count. But what it does have is a duet board. And I'm going to be in all honesty, I think I rated Wingspan a six. And as we were talking, I bought it. I bought it myself when I had gone on a business trip to Baraboo. And I think you were so surprised when I said, guess what game I bought? Yeah, I was shocked that you brought that game home. But I enjoyed it. Like the first time we played it, we were just like, rawr, rawr, move the eggs. Yeah, I think that first time we did that and we never, we didn't play it again for months. Yeah, we were like so... We were. Well, we played Wingspan, didn't really do anything. Yeah, I spent $60 on a game. Okay, did it. Done. Stick it back. In there, done that, played Wingspan. Okay. But, can say we did that. But the, the, when you actually play it, I like the game. You, on the other hand, did not. You didn't. You are you felt, an engine builder. Yeah, I'm not going to say that you didn't like the game, but it was missing something for you. We'll just call it that. It was missing something for you. Almost. You said it the other day that it didn't finish, feel finished. Mm -hmm. Did not feel finished when when you were playing it at two yeah. players. Yeah. So here comes, along comes Wingspan Asia. And right now it's currently rated 8.4 on BGG. And it is ranked 681. It's not a hard game. It's a very, very, very easy once you understand how the mechanics work. Yep. It, it's pretty much just like base wingspan, except the addition of the duet board, which makes which makes the game. I'm going to use the word solidifies. Solidifies. It solidifies it as a place on as a two player game that I'm going to want to keep going back to. Yeah. So what makes that what makes that board so special, Angie? The board it gives you choices, which I don't think base wingspan does. 
I think you're just basically building your engine, making cards, doing things, talking cards. But this duet board really gives you choices. So when you play a bird card and it is suggested, you don't have to do it. Um, you get little yin-yang tokens. There's a black and a white. And it's suggested that you lay them on all your bird spaces. So you remember that when you play a bird card to put it, the little token on the duet board. The duet board is broken up into the three zones that are on your player board, the woodland, the water, and the grassland. They have uh, different different spaces. They're all different circles. They have uh, they have the resources. They have the fish, the worm, the cherry, the wheat, and the rat. Some of them have the different types of nests. Some of them have um, the wingspan. Is it greater or less than 50? Which way is your beak facing left or right? So they're all these circles, and they are connected by dotted lines. So when you play, if I played um, the willow tit in the uh, woodland area, I would then have to put my token in a corresponding space in the woodland area of the duet board. And there I have the choices. Do I match the nest? Do I match one of the resources that I needed in order to make that bird? And so in here you come to choices because some of these areas have bonuses. They can give you an extra egg. They can give you an extra food. So you have, those are really something great to look shoot for. But like Wingspan, you have your round bonuses. And so you have to look at those. You have to look at those because some of your end round bonuses might be the edge of map. So if you have the most tokens on the edge of map, horizontal row, in the grasslands. So those are decisions. Do I put birds in the grasslands to get this bonus? You know, do I get these bonus cards so I can get more points for this bonus round? Or so I do I take the bonus that's maybe the token spot or do I work for end round? So there's different things you can really work for. But on top of that, there is for the, your, you're going to get points for your largest contiguous group. So if you can match all your little tokens up with these dotted lines, you're going to get points for that too. So you've got multiple ways of getting points on this duet board and choices. It just adds choices to it this does. game. So what it does is it's just outstanding. And yeah. I even like if you want to take a token and you put it down in that little spot, you can reset the birds or reset the food. Right. Yeah, it essentially replaces the original, the end round goals of the original game. Yeah. Um, because the goals are specific to that uh, duet map, yeah. right? And what I think is really neat is scoring is pretty much all or nothing. If you get that, yeah. if you get that end round score, you get the points. Yeah. Right. Is that correct? Do. Right. Yeah. Am I, am I thinking correctly? Well, if you right. tie, you both tie for the most. Yep. The person who wins the end of the round goal, they get the points. If you don't, you get nothing. Mm -hmm. You get nothing. Yeah. Um, I like that duet mode. It would be interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, this is another game that Angie and I have never played. Like base wingspan we're talking about that we've never played with more than just two players. But who I knows? Want to. Who knows? If we play that game with more than two players, that game might be awesome, right? I don't think it would add anything to it. I don't know. Anyway. I'm, I don't think it would add yeah, anything. Yeah, it might. To it. But but this game, it scratches all the itches for me. It makes it more of a gamer's game. Well, where yeah. Wingspan itself is more gateway. This is going to add a little bit more meat to the game. It adds a little bit of more meat to the game to make it a little bit thinkier. You maybe more strategic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Sorry, I was just listening to the sounds coming from downstairs. Um <clears throat> it does. It makes it a little bit more there there is there is 
strategy involved in where you're going to put your part place, your mm-hmm. piece on the duet board. However, I still think the game focuses more on the strategy on your bird board or whatever you want to call it, your player board, right? Well, you do, but that plays into it because there was that uh, second round bonus was most birds in the grassland and I didn't have it. And here the whole time I'm trying to strategize. Do I suddenly start throwing out grassland cards? But knowing you only have, I think at that point, seven moves. So it's six, six, maybe it's seven um, plays you're going to get. And thinking, am I going to get enough food and play these bird cards? And I got to get the cards and I realized I had to tank it. I had to just say, I'm not going to mm-hmm. give this Enron bonus. Um, so where do I go from here? So it does. So that way, it does. Right. That how you play your cards on your board are going to you know affect mm-hmm. how you play it on the duet board. So what do you think about the, the theme? Okay. The theme is there. It's a bird game. I guess I don't see the theme. I am so, so on the theme. So it could it be, could you paint on any other theme to the game? Yes. You could. I think you could. builder. So if you want to change it up, you know, you can do it with spaceships. So, I mean, whether or not you like the theme of birds, you could change the theme if you right. wanted to, if you necessary. Um, does the theme play its way through the board? Sure. You know, where you're putting the nest and stuff like that. So the theme is not much different than it would be on base wingspan. Okay. In my opinion. I think you're right. I think it's a game that you could pretty much put any theme on. I'm sure you could say that about many other games, yeah. but you could put something else in there. Like you use spaceships, right? You could you could do that. What do you think about the mechanics? I think it's unique. I don't want to say it's unique. I'm sure there's other games out there, but I like the mechanic of having your p- player cubes. Mm-hmm. And each round you take, at the end of the round, you take that one cube and you place yeah. it on the round scoring. So you have and fewer actions the next round. As the game goes on, you have fewer actions. I like that. For the most part, as long as you have the resources to pay, you can, you have a lot of options. Let's just call it that. I think you have a lot of options on your turn. Mm-hmm. You don't get into a situation in this game like we were just talking about in Beer and Bread where you have stuff you can't do anything with. I haven't ran into that yet on this game. I've had stuff that I can't do things with because I don't have the resources. But at any time, you can just draw another card. Yeah. Or yeah, you could take the feed a bird thing. Because there is, yeah. yeah. There is no... And There's the no nice hand thing limit. is, if I've we've never I've never did it that way, but if I want to take my token and stick it there, I could have redid Refreshed. redid the bird feeder. Mm-hmm. And there were times I, I thought about that. Yep. Or I, I should say I didn't think about that, but I thought about really needing to do that. The mm-hmm. Darn, you know. And then at that point taking resources maybe that you don't need in order to get down to that last one to um, re-roll and stuff like that. But So, I mean, I it's got solid mechanics. I think it does too. You know, taking away from, you know, how do you, do you want to compare it to base wingspan? So it's kind of hard to say, okay, I thought this was okay. This is good. I think it's a solid mechanics. It's got the, Game's got good engine building. Um, like what you said about how you take your game cubes and each round you're losing one. It's got um, 
and how I, I enjoy how you're moving those tokens onto the duet board. To me, that's kind of the biggest thing with this game. That being said, what do you think about the replayability? I think it's there. I think it's there. <clears throat> My voice is starting to sound like yours. I think it is there. I think I've already fallen into the trap of having one play style. Hmm. Okay, I didn't even think about that. I'm the Tucker. You are the Tucker. I'm the Tucker. <laughs> well, you have. I will always, anytime there's a card that allows me to tuck a bird card underneath it, mm -hmm. you better believe I will probably take it and play it. You do. Because you just, I just, God, it, it gives you, if there's a bird you don't want to play, it doesn't just sit and muck up your hand. You can yeah. put it under a card and you can get a point. Yeah. So, but as far as replayability, I think it's there. I mean, you have I those, think, there, you have enough of those end round goals and then you have enough of them and then they're, you know, double sided. So I think that way always ends, gives you something else to shoot for. You're not always shooting for the same thing in yep. each game. And I mean, there's probably a divided camp out there saying, no, base wingspan's better than this. Who needs a duet board? Who needs this? Who needs that? I'm a fan of base wingspan. I've played it over 200 times, yada, Those yada, yada. Don't... But what I was trying to say is if somebody can play base wingspan over 200 times and if there's replayability in that, there's going to be replayability in this. And I think we will find out for sure. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought it sounded pretty deep. I don't know what that it sounded means. pretty deep. <laughs> yeah. What I'm trying to say is I think there's a good replay value in it. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to say if somebody can, if people can say they've played Wingspan over 200 times. Do people say that? Oh, yeah. I have read comments like that. Really? Yeah. A guy who's played a game 200 times. Well, they got their money's worth. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, all right. Well. So I, I don't like to do the whole score thing, but this shoots this up to an eight for me. It's an eight for you? It's an eight for me. Very nice. I would say the same thing. It is an eight for me. I'm going to take this game. I'm going to shuffle it back into, <laughs> I'm going to shuffle it back onto my shelf. Oh, I thought you were going to put it back into the... Into the deck? The bird pile, yeah. Uh, well, put it back into the you think it's cheesy when I say, I'm going to shuffle it back into the... I well, do. But see, we have not played a game that... There's only one game I would shuffle into the discard pile. Two games. Shuffle into the discard pile? Yeah, I would toss it right into that discard pile, and that would be Discover Lands Unknown <laughs> and Patchwork. But... This is definitely a shuffler back into the deck. This is shuffle back into the deck. Yeah, see, oh, you're getting into it. He's starting to use it. I think it's about time to wrap up this episode. I mean, we've talked about our vacation. We talked about our feelings on Wingspan Asia. And uh, I really think there's only one thing left to do. And that is, actually, you know what? I want to give a shout out to a awesome pair of content creators, Brandon and Lexi from the All Aboard Gamer channel. Brandon has started to do live streams on his channel. And I really, it's Thursday nights. They're good people. They're very genuine people. Yes. Yeah, they are. They are down to earth, and it's just cool to to be able to chat. And he's very responsive, and he interacts very well with the audience in the chat room. And I really dig that. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, just wanted to give them a shout out. They do a fantastic job. If you have not had a chance to check them out, you can find them just about anywhere. Uh, and, and I think they have the presence somewhere on all the socials, um, but they do have a good presence on YouTube. They have a Discord channel. They have um, there's an Instagram. If you haven't checked them out yet, it's All Aboard Gamer. 
and uh, you should check them out. So that being said, keep on chasing those meeples, meeple chasers. Bye. (laughs) See you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to Episode 9 of the Chasing Meeples Podcast. Don't forget to follow and rate our podcast on your favorite platform. Please share this with your friends. And most importantly, visit our website, chasingmeeples.buzzsprout.com, for more episodes. Keep chasing those meeples. Thank you for your support.